it is quite important to to take the good bits out of what was a, a performance that in in large parts actually had a lot to recommend it. Yeah, I think so. I think look, one of my um, one of my strengths is that I um, can get to the end and see the big picture and don't get emotionally too attached to things. So that's a strength of mine. But the, one of the weaknesses of that is that you can get there too quick for everybody else in the fact that. There's a bit of an emotion attached to those results that um, I can see through quite quickly. So there's no like you can't say it's a good a good performance or good result when like you can't lose four 0 at home and really they've scored a couple of goals that we we should not concede. But when you do look now, everything that I thought on the night has bear fruit in every statistical bit of data we've done on that game, um, the expected goals that they get, everything that game was so close. Um, it never felt like to me a 4 0 game on the night, and I don't think it really ever looked like one either. Watching back at it and reading everything else, the, the other the other side of that is like I'm the biggest um, the biggest one to say there's only one statistic that matters really. Now, obviously, when you do look at performance and process, the other things can steer you towards what were we trying to achieve and did we get close. So. Um, I actually haven't changed my thinking about that at all and in a way that probably helps you stay a little bit calmer in the moment to not completely lose the plot with the players afterwards or in their assessment of the game um, because I felt like it was a good game with two teams really having a, a right go at it and the reason why they are where they are and will probably end up in those positions, um, the clinical nature of their attack in play, the quality of some of their play at times for sure. Um, and, and actually, it sounds ridiculous to say that between or before all the goals, we had really good periods in that game. Um, but obviously, the goals went their way and not ours. So you can't sort of dine out too much on, on the positives of the night. But when we do step back and look at uh, the 10 game period and how certain elements of that game will serve us really well in the next 36, there was quite a lot to quite like about it. Um, and, and I think that the progress we're making is, is quite vast, actually. And with a group of new staff and a whole new team, um, I think we're in a good position 10 games into the season. And we'd have certainly taken that, not only in terms of points scored, but performance levels and progress made. So, um, yeah, tough, tough really result to take. And I haven't really got over that element of it at all. It's, it's going to anger us for ages, I think. Um, but as well, the players will always be really angry and really emotional after the game. And everybody will be, and I completely understand that. Uh, my job isn't to add to that emotion at all. It's to try to be as objective as possible um, and make sure that people see the progress that we're making. And uh, I think that the players have understood that and can see that asset themselves. I guess one of the bigger frustrations is from the outside looking in, there's that danger that people say, oh, Cambridge United made a strong start last season, now it's going off the boil. But as you've just said, anybody who's been watching the games week in, week out, you can see that you're a different animal this time around and some of the improvements are just, yeah, really, really big. Yeah, and we've had one bad performance which created a, an away defeat and one bad result on, on Tuesday. I don't think the other results have come in bad performances. I also don't buy into statistics like one win in six because then that decries the brilliant results we've had at Derby and Port Vale and the win against Reading. Like, it's either true or not that they were really good results, and they were really good results, so then the run doesn't matter. Um, over 46 games, we've got to get enough results. We've had four in 10. That's a brilliant result for us. Play that out over the season, you get 16, 17, or maybe 18 wins and finish in the top half. Well, tell me who wouldn't accept that right now. So um, we're in, a, we're in a, a good enough position. We're probably a couple of points short of where we wanted to be at this point and could have been with chances we've had in games. Um, but then you could also argue there's games we've taken some points from that could have gone the other way because that's just how it works. It's such a such a low scoring game in that sense. So um, yeah, I do think that there's um, really easy parallels for people to make to last season. I don't see it. I see it as a completely different team, and the two seasons don't look the same at all. Um, you, you could argue anything you like. Good start. Well, we've not had as good a start as we had last year. Then so like it's crazy, really. Like we, it doesn't really matter. We, we've got a new team uh, that are playing well, that are developing well. When we've got everybody fit and available, it creates really good competition. Um, and we, we picked up a couple of knocks. You can never choose your timing of those ones, really, and the timing of your games. Um, but as I said on Tuesday, we took five points from five, I think, really, really tricky games. And um, that's a good point return from those games. We'd have loved to have taken six, maybe seven, if we could have done. Potentially, you'd want more than that, obviously. But if we'd have taken an extra point from that and said six points from those five games, we'd have been saying that as an incredible run. So... 
I, I just don't buy into the emotion of it all too much. I just think that we are where we are. We're doing quite well and um, we're making good progress. And I actually like the signs of what we're becoming um, very early on in the cycle of a new team. With the whole emotional side of it, raw emotions after Tuesday night, do you cut the players a bit of slack in that respect? In that, as the manager, you if you can stay on an even keel, it's a huge bonus. Does it matter so much for the players? Is it quite good if they can let it all out a bit and, and in that regard? Yeah, I mean, I don't want you to think there's scraps going on in the dressing room. I think the, the great thing about that game was there was a little bit of disbelief that we'd lost the game 4-0. So in a way, it was easy to deal with because people just go, well, that, that ended 4-0. There's, there's no way that should end 4-0. Now, it does, so we have to work out why um, and put it right. But the best thing is um, when you create a bit of an identity as a team, which we're doing, you end up knowing why you've won and why you haven't, and that's the big key. If you know what you're trying to get to, and you're really clear in your plan, it's so much easier to evaluate where it went right or where it went wrong. So it's easy for us to do that, that piece of work. And sometimes, um, as coaches, you want to do that quite quickly, and actually you need people to, hear, to, to bleed a little bit after a defeat, because it just burns, it's horrible feeling that. Um, and players absolutely should feel like that. And don't, don't get me wrong, we do as well. Like, it's horrible you don't sleep after games and things it's just rotten and you don't think about anything else whatever else is going on in your life that, that won't go away from your mindset for the next 48 hours until you play and that's a, a long way away but um, at the same time we, we have a, a, a good sense of perspective and understanding what we're trying to do and um, yeah I think there was a real frustration in the team on Tuesday but um, come in this morning and we've had a little ten, a review of our 10 games and the next 5 block that we want to try and attack really well and um, we trained at the Abbey today and lads cracked on and trained well. You seem to be hitting Burton at the point where they're, they're building a bit of momentum, had a slow start, but I'm beating, I think it's four, is it now for them? Yeah, I'm beating in four and a brilliant result against Wigan at home on uh, Tuesday night. So they are, like you say, hitting a, a good run of form. Myself and Jack went to watch them against Port Vale a couple of weeks ago when we were watching that. Jack went to watch them on Tuesday and the, the result against Wigan. Um, we've had a couple of other scouts that have watched them. Kevin Betsy's watched the last couple of games and we're meeting in the next hour to do our normal debrief as coaching staff or pre-brief with Ben Small presenting to us. So he will have bucket loads of information on them, which is always good. And then the job of the next few days is to cipher that down into the information the players need um, and to create a bit of a plan as to how to go there and, and put on a really good performance. But they're certainly finding good form now. It's taken them a little bit of time, one or two injuries, you get that as well this time of season, lots of new players in the summer and it can take some teams a long while to find their best team or best style or way of going, but it looks like they're heading towards that now. So yeah, it'll be a, a big good game and the start of a, a really, really busy period of basically two games a week for five weeks and um, it's, it's one, to, one to quite look forward to and see where at the end of that, you know, middle of November, um, we'll be a third of the season in and it'll be good to see where we are. Yeah, are Burton basing themselves around the the typical traits, if you like? Are they familiar in that sense, the strengths that they had last season? Yes, I think always very strong on restarts and set plays. I think they've always got direct threats in the team. Um, you can easily be outworked um, by, by, a, by Dino's teams if you're not at the level. Um, but then that can be almost sounding like they haven't got good technical footballers. They've got lots of them and they can play they can play some good football as well. So I think they've got a real balance in their game. Um, and we always know how tough the games are against them. We've, we've had really close games against them in over the years. And um, you've got the added spice of it again being another TV game. So uh, that, will be, that will be good. And hopefully we can continue our good record on the telly. Yeah, yeah, it certainly seemed to draw strength from that last time around with, with Reading. For the team news, with Suli Kai Kai, has he still got a, a chance for Monday? Uh, Suli Kai Kai and Seiku Jana are training fully, so we're hopeful that they will both be able to be uh, involved. So we're keeping our eye closely on that. Um, but they've trained fully again this morning, which is good. And then everybody else is um, just building up minutes, really, in lots of lots of cases. In Jordan and Adam's case, they're, they're getting closer to being available. I think the cup games that we've got in the month will be really good to get them the bigger side of the minutes, or guarantee that anyway. And that could obviously come sooner in the, the league games, but um, they're, they're building up towards that. So uh, having those two extra ones back will be a real bonus for us and give us really good op options to start the game with, but also in-game. With Elias Kachunga obviously disappointing to be without him for a while, is that 
roughly what you you feared? There was a bit of mystery, I suppose, around the injury at first, but did you suspect it might be a relatively lengthy one? Yeah, I mean, really similar to Seku, he just pulled up in the game, and you know, you just know it's the hamstring area. He was hopeful that he might have caught it early enough. Um, but the scan sort of showed up what the physios expected, really. So, yeah, probably a six to eight weeker for him, which is a real frustration because he was getting going nicely. You know, he came in late and missed a lot of that pre-season at the beginning, which can be a consequence of that, these sorts of injuries. Um, same with SK, probably. He's had a few little knocks and stop-start, but that, that can come down to not having that whole pre-season that, that others have had. Um, and then Katz is just yeah, trying to get to speed and, and, and obviously broken down a little bit. So... I think I said the other night, if we can always try and make, if there's one out, that's not so bad. If you start to get more than that, it takes away a lot of your options. So we'll have to um, cover for that and ho- hope everybody else stays fit. But it'll, it'll be a big loss for us because he can cover a lot of positions and he's got excellent physicality and, and excellent experience. But um, yeah, hopefully we'll have the options to, to cover for that. And just a quick word on your goalkeepers. There's been a lot of talk in the Prem around Arsenal and what they've done with David Rea and Aaron Ramsdale. You've had it both ways round, really, over recent seasons, where sometimes you've had two goalies really neck and neck, and other times there's been perhaps a more formal recognition of first choice and then and then back up. How do you see it with your, your goalies? Yeah, look, Will's done great. Jack's the number one, and um, Will's, Will's been brilliant in the games that he's played, and, and he's absolutely at a level to play in our team and play consistently. So... The, the fact that we've got two excellent goalkeepers, uh, you know, I understand the idea of actually just that quality throughout every position because you don't want to be weaker when you make changes and you want to make sure that those that are in starting positions um, know they've got to be good to stay in. And, and that shouldn't really matter whether you're the goalkeeper or not. If you're, that, if you're you know, the number two goalkeeper, but you're flying, then you can stay in the team. If you're the number one goalkeeper and you're under huge pressure every single day in training, you've got to be on it to, to play. So in, in many ways, that isn't any different to any of the other positions. So I think we're in a really strong position that we've got two goalkeepers there that have both played um, that make us better and, and can... Um, you know, we, we've we've kept a lot of clean sheets, half of our games in league games, and, and, and they've both played the part in that. So I'm, I'm absolutely delighted with the, the strength of that department, uh, the work that Martin's doing with them and the quality of those players. It gives us a real strength throughout the squad. And um, there's a couple of positions where we're maybe a little bit lighter, but really in the main, you can look across the whole squad and know that we've got really good strength in depth in, in lots of those areas until they're injured and then you haven't got good strength in depth and everyone will say you should sign more players and um, but that, that's that's the way it goes hopefully we can keep them fit because you can't you can't sign everybody but yeah we're in a we're in a nice enough position in that area of the game particularly where both boys are performing really well brilliant that's great for me Hi Mark you, um, you spoke earlier about the fact that you feel like your team's making Good progress this season. It, were you referring to any specific areas when you said that, or is it kind of across the board? Do you feel that is the case? Yeah, good question. Probably, I mean, across the board, I think there's lots of areas. But I mean, if I was in particular saying where I feel we've made really good progress so far, um, we haven't necessarily had all the results of goals directly from set plays, but we look a dangerous team in set play situations, and often our set plays lead to chances. Statistically, very high for that in the league or secondary attacks. So we're really pleased with that area, and hope that we can keep improving and add more goals to that part of the game. Um, the second area, I think, is we talked in the summer about being a bit more aggressive with our starting positions and our counter-pressing and things, and, and we've definitely made big improvements there, and, and we've got the, the not only from what we've seen, but the data to almost back up there's a big improvement there. And then the third area that we've really wanted to make improvements is being able to control spells of game, maintain possession better, start, start attacks from deeper in the pitch. Um, and, and some of that on Tuesday was outstanding. Outstanding, some of our work with the ball to build the, the game and get to the top third of the pitch, connected and in good positions and in good connections and good control. Um, our possession stats are rising all the time, which is great, and you want to do that without losing the direct nature of our teams and without becoming a team that doesn't penetrate as well. So it's connecting every part of what we want together for the perfect performance. Now that rarely exists, and every game can look a little bit different, but the more that we can control games and, and take the ball and um, be a little bit more methodical or slow or have more passes in our build-up, the better. Um, so we're not relying on being a team without the ball as long. And there'll be games where we are and we have to be um, mindful of that and how well we defend the ball. You know, go to Derby, uh, we don't use the ball very well, but we defend 
unbelievably to take a brilliant point. We go to Wigan, we have a real good share of the ball, we play with really good control and possession and, and we've had other games where we've done that and they might not always have gone for us in terms of results but over the bigger picture we feel that the results will go our way if we keep building on that. And you mentioned about this this team this season, you won't, you can't really compare this team to last and what happened in terms of what happened last season. What have you learned from that experience last season of the the down uh, the, the the form going downhill to prevent a repeat of that? I hope that all your players stay fit because whatever anybody says, that was the biggest contributor to it. it and you've got positions on the pitch where you can't put your team out, and we've got a bigger squad. Um, other than that. All the secrets of learning from the coaching world, uh, I'll keep to myself and hopefully we'll see them go well. But um, it's really, really simple. Cambridge United needs as many of its players fit as possible and as strong a squad as possible to cope um, because that will always be the determining factor. We, we, we've made good changes in games. We've been able to do that and that's really impacted games for us. Um, we, had, we didn't have the option to do that very often at all last season until the back end post-January um, when we were able to add to the squad. So that, that is the, the fundamental thing. All of the things around what I've just talked about in terms of our style and the development of us as a team, they are massive, massively important. Um, partly they are lessons from last year, but, but more than that, it's just the evolution of this team, where we started and where we want to get to. So part of that is just a big picture of the team we want to become eventually. And hopefully... Um, I mean, there's no doubt over three and a half years, we've just got better, simply got better all the time. Better players, a deeper squad, better infrastructure, but bigger staff. Everything's just improving. And there's no reason why performance and development of our players shouldn't, shouldn't follow the same, the same path. So we'll continue doing that. And obviously myself in that as well, getting better and improving from those experiences. Um, but I don't even want to talk about the synergy between this and last year because I just don't see the two as the same thing. So I, I never really want to be drawn too much into comparisons of how we're going to prevent that. Like it's a completely different team, completely different season. Nothing like nothing this season's looked like last season. Maybe we had a good start, but that's the most basic. Like the start looks completely different. The teams we played, the style, the systems, the way we've played, everything's different. So um, at the moment, yeah, I mean, over the course of three and a half years. We've been relatively consistent, um, apart from a few months in the middle of last year. So uh, I'll probably fall back on the fact that I think we're quite good and we've got good players and um, we'll just continue getting better. And hopefully consistency is the, the biggest sign of that. Yeah. One player that you might come up against on Mondays, Steve Seddon. Was he a player that you considered bringing back? After his loan spell last season, no, Danny was uh, Danny was a player we were always after as a as a fullback at this year. But that said, as a diamond, he was obviously under contract still um, with Oxford, so that that made that situation a bit more complicated. Um, and obviously, for his injuries and bits, he just didn't get to play as much. You know, that back end of the season, the, the curse of the left back last season. So. We didn't see so much of him, but um, yeah, he's, I saw him last week and well, saw him play last week and made contact with him afterwards because he scored in the game I watched at Port Vale. So it's nice to see him, great character, um, and he was good around the place. But obviously, didn't get to play so much while he was here. But he wasn't. We, we were always like end of the season. We knew we were after a left back, and uh, Danny was the one we were hoping for, and we managed to do that, which is great. Yeah, and just on the injury front as well, did everyone else come through the game okay on Tuesday? And are they all good for Monday? Uh, everyone came through the game on Tuesday. There's quite a long time till Monday, so I don't want to say they're all good for Monday. Just, no yes. Just one from me, Mark, on um, Liam Bennett. He's obviously played a, a lot of football for you since coming back in, in January and came off at half-time at Derby, didn't start at the on Tuesday. Is it just the case of that's what you have to do with young players sometimes and, and give him a bit of a breather out of the side? Yeah, I mean, that might be a fair comment, and you're probably right, but... That breather usually comes after five or six games, not like 40 or 50. Like he's done unbelievably well. In the end, I don't, really, I don't really see him like a young player. That's how well he's done. He's just like all the other players. Um, you know, we've, we've, we've accepted, we've built a squad with him as our main right back. So it's not like we've tried to, this is a break. Last year was a 50 game season for him. He's done unbelievable. I think he's played nearly every game, like even the cup games. So um, just like anybody that goes in a big run, in this two months or six week period where we've got two games a week, 12 games in 35 days or whatever it is, not one player will play every game. It's as simple as that. No, no way will everyone be able to play every game. So wherever that time comes, 
And it always feels really, really much worse if you're subbed off at 45 than if it was 50. But in the end, it don't matter. We made a sub in the first half, so we needed to gain another opportunity to make a sub, and half time is that opportunity to do it, so you still got two opportunities in the second half. So there's a bit of game management in that substitution as well. Um, but we're absolutely no doubt with him. And Kev described him the other day as best young right back in the league, and he is. And he's, he's why a whole host of clubs watch him and love him because he's doing great for us. So, yeah, we, we, we um, no doubt he'll play again and he'll get back in the team and he'll do great because he has done great in that period of time. And we're, um, we're absolutely delighted with him. And if it means that he's had, you know, came on the other night and had a good impact and we'll see what happens at Burton. But if he's out of the team, his job will be to get back in it just like everybody else's and be ready for when that chance comes. But, yeah, we're, we're um, thrilled with the progress he's made for sure.